What is up guys? We're going to be talking about server-side request forgery. What is it? We'll also see an example of how it works. Now, on a really basic level, we're familiar with the idea that we make HTTP requests to a server, we receive responses, and our browser displays a web page based on those responses. But in order to deal with our HTTP requests, sometimes the server has to make its own HTTP requests to external sources. It can then send us our HTTP response based on the response it gets from those external sources. Now, hopefully this is fairly intuitive, but we as the end user should not be able to control the types of HTTP requests that the server is making to external or perhaps even internal resources. So anytime we find ourselves in a situation where we are manipulating the server, which we don't own, into making HTTP requests on our behalf, which look like they originate from the server itself. Now that is server-side request forgery. So let's take a look at an example of how this works. So we'll make use of this lab, basic SSRF against the local server. Now the idea with this lab is it mimics an online shop. An online shop has products and we often want to check if a certain product is in stock. So let's go to view details on a random product. And if we scroll down, we'll see that we have the ability to check the stock of this product in various different stores. Now let's think for a moment about what happens when we submit a request. The request comes from us, the end user, to the server saying we'd like to check the stock of this product. The server doesn't know itself whether this product is in stock. So the server actually then sends out an additional HTTP request to a certain API. It's going to be an internal API in this case, which then checks to see if the product is in stock, returns a value to the server, which then uses that value as part of its HTTP response to us, the end user. So we can see the server is making a HTTP request in response to our HTTP request. Let's start by submitting a check stock request and inspecting the subsequent HTTP request that's sent to the server in Burp. So we see that the browser makes a post request to product stock URL. Let's take a look at that request itself. Now, mostly this request looks fine, but there's something that should jump out immediately as not being quite right. If we have a look at the body of this post request, we have a stock API parameter and a value. And the value of that stock API parameter appears to be a URL. And if we look carefully at the URL itself, it becomes apparent that this is the URL of the internal API that returns the number of items in stock. In other words, our front end request contains instructions for the server in terms of which internal API the server should visit. Your alarm bell should immediately be going off here because as the end user, we have control over the value of this parameter. We can change it to whatever we like. So as a simple example, let's completely change the value of this URL. So we'll first send this request to the repeater in burp, and we're going to manipulate the value of this API URL. Let's try something simple like HTTP localhost admin. So when we send a HTTP request to the localhost address, we're making an internal request to the server itself. In other words, the server is making a request to the server, making use of what's known as a loopback adapter. Now, the idea here is if we tried to visit this URL as the end user, we wouldn't be able to get access. We clearly wouldn't have access to an admin folder since we're not admin. But the server sees this request come from itself and as a result, trusts that request. It's an internal request. So it's therefore not from an end user. Although the problem is in this case, it really is from an end user. That's why this is referred to as server-side request forgery. 
So let's choose apply changes. Let's resubmit that post request. Let's see what we get as a result. We get some HTML back. Let's check out the render tab to see what this would look like in the browser. Guess what? We appear to have some sort of admin panel and we have the option to delete users. Now we can't actually click these links inside the burp render tab. However, let's try sending this to the browser and this will just help to illustrate the difference between a legitimate request and a server side request forgery request. So we'll choose request in browser in current browser session. We're going to copy this link. We're going to paste it into our browser. And you can see we get the same admin page. Now the objective of this lab is actually to delete this user Carlos. Let's see what happens if we click the delete button. Notice we get an error message. Admin interface only available if logged in as administrator or if requested from loopback. So what's the issue here? This request to delete the user Carlos came from us, the end user. It didn't come from the server. So we can't simply submit this particular HTTP request as the end user. We don't have permission for that. What we actually have to do is convince the server to make this request itself. That request will then be trusted internally and it will be processed. Let's think for a minute how we can do that. Let's inspect this link in the DOM. And let's take a look at what this link actually does. So it's a link, it has a href attribute and the location is forward slash admin forward slash delete question mark indicating the beginning of a query string username is Carlos. So that's a request we're trying to make. We can't make that HTTP request as the end user, but guess what? We can supply it as the value of our stock API param. So admin forward slash delete username equals Carlos. So now the request is going to come from the server itself and it's going to be trusted as a result. Let's click apply changes. Let's send this post request. Notice we get the message, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so that's pretty much it for server-side request forgery. Hope you understand, at least on a basic level, what server-side request forgery is and how we might execute an SSRF attack. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching, guys.